Hello everyone, I am Indrani Das. I am a PhD student at University of Western Ontario. I am working with Professor Shantanu Basu. We are doing a joint project. My colleague Mahmoud Sharkawi and Professor Masahiro Mashida are also a part of it. Today I am going to talk about ambipolar diffusion and ohmic dissipation in protostellar disks. In the figure, let's take the patch as a highly conducting plasma cloud. The magnetic field lines are threaded into it. As the gravitational contraction generates current that helps the inside magnetic field to grow stronger, such that magnetic flux is being conserved. For such a magnetically supported cloud, magnetic energy density, it should be equal to the cell gravitational energy density. So the relative strength of gravity and the magnetic field in a molecular cloud is generally expressed in terms of a parameter called mass to flux ratio, mu naught. And it is written in the units of critical value for the gravitational collapse. So the supercritical clouds for which self gravity dominates over magnetic field, fragmentation occurs for them under flux regime. However, for subcritical clouds, for which magnetic field dominates over gravity, no fragmentation can occur under flux regime. However, these subcritical clouds can undergo gravitational instability due to neutral ion slip and the dissipation of the magnetic flux. This is a cartoon of our thin disk model. We have considered partially ionized isothermal self-gravitating magnetic planar sheets uh, which have infinite extent in X and Y, and it has a local vertical half thickness Z. This is the external pressure, and the magnetic field is taken to have this mathematical form. I'm not going into the details here. We obtain a cubic dispersion relation from our model, which includes two non-ideal MHD effects. Theta includes ambipolar diffusion term, Theta contains tau and i, which is a neutral ion collision time, and it is a measure of ambipolar diffusion. Gamma includes ohmic dissipation. It has the eta OD. Eta OD is ohmic diffusivity, and it is a measure of ohmic dissipation. Eta AD is called ambipolar diffusivity. C effective is the effective sound speed, which uh, includes the restoring effects of the external pressure. Capital omega represents the rotation term. Mu naught is mass to flux ratio. Va is the Alvin web speed. In this slide, those, these two figures are showing the growth time of gravitationally unstable modes as a function of length scale obtained in the flux region limit. We normalize all the time scale and all the length scale with respect to T naught and L naught respectively as defined here. So the left plot is showing the case with no rotation. Q is the tumorous Q rotation parameter. So without rotation, we are seeing the range of the unstable wavelengths is wider for each different mass to flux ratios. However, with the inclusion of rotation, we see the range of the unstable wavelength has been shortened from both the ends, both from the longer end as well as from the shorter ends. And this is because rotation can stabilize the longer wavelength as well as the smaller wavelengths. In order to see the effects of rotation together with the magnetic field, we derive a modified expression of Q, which includes the magnetic dependence in terms of mu naught. And one more interesting point uh, to see here that each curve yields a minimum growth time scale corresponding to a length scale, which we are calling here preferred length scale. I will talk more about it in my next slides. In this slide, I'm going to discuss generalized tumor instability criteria obtained under the flux region limit. So the equation Q less than Q crit M, it is a MHD limit for instability. Q crit M, we are calling it as magnetic critical limit of Q. It's a function of mu naught, as seen by the red solid curve here. And the dashed line here shows the critical boundary for the hydrodynamic limit, which is defined as this. And here C effective tilde is a dimension less effective sound speed. It becomes unity when no external pressure. And then this expression exactly looks like the tumorous instability criteria. So the key point is uh, as a cloud becomes more and more supercritical, the feasible instability range of Q ex expands with the increase of mu, 
until it merges with that of the hydrodynamical limit. Here, uh, these two figures in the upper panel are showing the shortest growth time scale and the corresponding length scale that we are calling preferred length scale as a function of mass to flux ratios. The top panel shows the case with ohmic, the bottom panel shows the case with ambipolar. We see for the supercritical regime, the time scale is essentially dynamical time. It depends on the thermal length scale. As the mass to flux ratio approaches to the critical value, under flux freezing, it would take infinitely long time scale and length scale for a region to collapse into clump or core. However, in the addition of diffusive parameters, both the time scale and the length scale curves become finite over the subcritical region. And this behavior is qualitatively similar for both the non-ideal case. For the length scale plot, it results a very sharp resonant like peak at a nearly transcritical mass to flux ratio, which means that the clouds which are marginally supercritical, they will form core which will have significantly larger length scale than those which are forming in highly supercritical as well as in subcritical. And specifically for the ohmic dissipation, uh, in the subcritical regime, the preferred length scale converges to that of the critical thermal length scale. Hence, we see the time scale for ohmic are going to the infinity, whereas for ambipolar, the preferred length scale in the subcritical regime converges to that of preferred thermal length scale, which is twice of this limit as often from our model. Hence, the time scale uh, for ambipolar, it attains a plateau over the subcritical regime. Here I'm showing some 3D simulation results of protostellar disk. So the simulation is run and set up by Mashahiro and uh, my colleague Mahmoud Sharkawi has generated these plots. These are the plots for angle averaged quantities, the logarithmic of number density, uh, temperature and the Z component of the magnetic field. So these are plotted in the RZ plane and R max and Z max are the outer edges of the innermost level of the nested grid. So the flared region we are seeing it represents the protostellar disk. For the magnetic field plot, it has got an off-centered peak because of magnetic diffusion in the high density region. Within the flared region, we are seeing the number density is varying approximately from 10 for 10 to 10 for 12 per centimeter cube, and the temperature is varying approximately from 30 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin. Based on these uh, simulation results and the previous works of Basu et al, we took some typical numbers uh, for the neutral and collision time and the ohmic diffusivity corresponding to the number density 10 for 11 per centimeter cube. So this is the model which incorporates both the non-ideal MHD effects, ohmic and ambipolar together with rotation. And this model can be applied to the protostellar disk. So this plot is showing the shortest growth time scale as a function of mass to flux ratio for each different rotation parameter. We see that with higher rotation, the time scale becomes longer. It's because this is uh, attaining more support from rotation together with thermal pressure and magnetic field against the cell gravitational collapse. And interestingly, in the high density regime, the effects of ambipolar diffusion cannot be neglected. Because of this ambipolar diffusion, uh, the time scale curve has got a plateau over the subcritical regime, which were indefinitely long uh, for the ohmic dissipation only case That's, that I showed in my previous slides. So this is the plot for the preferred fragmentation length scale as a function of mass to flux ratio. And the peak preferred fragmentation length scales uh, is getting smaller with higher rotation because rotation can stabilize longer wavelengths. And the peaks are also getting shifted gradually to a greater mu naught. It's because uh, this is attaining more support from rotation and the field lines are not dragged in as much. And the magnetic field curvature is getting maximized at a greater mu naught where the gra gravity becomes more dominant. This is the plot for the preferred fragmentation mass as a function of mass to flux ratio. We see the peak preferred fragmentation mass exceeds the genes mass by an order of up to 10 when including any diffusive parameters. And the peak preferred fragmentation masses are coming 
around 10 to 80 times of Jupiter mass. So this uh, can allow a step forward uh, to the understanding of the clump within the protostellar disk in the early embedded phase. Here I'm gonna discuss uh, the ambipolar diffusivity and the humic diffusivity as a function of uh, number density. So the figure um, we see here, all the discrete data points are obtained from the linear analysis data. And we use these two mathematical expressions to obtain, obtain these results. And the two solid curves are obtained by Dapital from a simulation result that has a chemical network. And we see that uh, the linear analysis result is very well consistent with the simulation results and the uh, ohmic uh, diffusivity wins over the ambipolar diffusivity from a number density of about 10 power 12 per centimeter cube. So here I'm gonna summing up my results. Uh, the tumor instability criteria for a rotating fluid is modified by the magnetic field in the flux resin limit. The time scale and length scales are also depending on the diffusivities and the Q values. Qualitatively, we see both the non-ideal MHD effects behave similarly, and the peak preferred length scale occurs at a nearly transcritical mass to flux ratio. And we see both uh, ambipolar and humic can control the gravitational instability in the outer part of the disk. The peak preferred mass exists genes mass by order of up to 10, and these masses is likely to be around 10 to 80 times of Jupiter mass, which might help to the understanding of the clump formation within the protostellar disk in the, in the early embedded phase. Thank you all for listening.